This is 10 News Weekend. I'm so sick of people saying that love is just all a woman is fit for. I'm so sick of it. There were a lot of good movies this year, and movie critic Will Meyer is here now to talk about which ones made his top five. Little Women, definitely one that yeah. I want to see, and I really love that you're wearing your Christmas movie sweater too Festive today. Festive movie sweater, yes. My girlfriend got this, and her sister got this for me for Christmas, and I thought this is the perfect it's occasion perfect. to wear it. So. It is, Will. All right, let's start with Little Women. Just came out a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's, uh, and this is, you know, there have been so many adaptations of this classic novel, but I think that Greta Gerwig's adaptation is the best one. This one Ooh, is so, so good. Um, it's got an incredible cast, Sir Ronan, Meryl Streep, Timothy Chalamet, Chris Cooper, and Florence Pugh, who I think is amazing. I think she deserves to win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Um, this is such a lively, fun, fresh take on the story of the March sisters, and Gerwig actually changes some things around with the story. She makes some changes, but I think that what she does is more brilliant than it is blasphemous, and I just think that um, this movie is so alive. It's so much fun, and you know, I think that it, it's tough to take something set in the 1800s and make it seem like that, but her take on the novel's themes of equality, of uh, romantic love, and also self-discovery, all of it just feels so modern. So, you know, I can't really think of a better way to spend two hours than, uh, than watching this movie in the theater. So take your whole family. This is the only PG movie on my list. So take your family to see Little Women. Ooh, I definitely want to see it, Will. All right, next on the list, you have The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Yeah, this movie stars Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe, and they're the only two people in this movie. So this is a haunting and hypnotic tale of, of madness. This is kind of The Shining if it were set in the 1800s. Um, but it's not only a scary movie, it's also very funny, and it's also um, like a psychodrama as well and it's just about these two lighthouse keepers off the coast of New England who spend way too much time together um, and it's set in the 1890s. I mean, it's a movie that features two amazing performances. Willem Dafoe is a great actor but I think this is the best performance he's, he's ever given and if you ever had any doubt that Robert Pattinson is a really good actor and I include myself in that bunch, <laughs> uh, go check out this movie because he is so incredibly good. This movie is just so weird but so entertaining. Uh, it's the most original thing I've seen all year. Interesting, and is it all shot in that format too? Uh, yeah, it's it's black and white, and it yeah it has that that aspect ratio that's really. I think that makes so. it a little bit eerier yeah, yeah. too. All it's right, number three on your list is The Irishman. The Irishman, yeah, this movie is directed by Martin Scorsese, and it stars Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Al Pacino, Harvey Keitel, an amazing cast. It took De Niro, uh, not De Niro, uh, Scorsese, nearly a decade to bring this to the screen. Oh wait, I mean to Netflix, uh, but it was well <laughs> worth the wait. Um, this is uh, you'd think with this cast and this director that this is Goodfellas 2.0, but it's really not. This movie is more melancholic and it's kind of about uh, the cruelty of time and the weight of regret. It is a profound movie about uh, about the mob. I don't know if it's his best, but it certainly is most moving. Um, you know, you can't get a cast better than this. It's Martin Scorsese. I mean, he's just a master. There's so many great things about this movie. Uh, the de-aging stuff where they make the actors younger didn't quite work for me, but when so many things, when so many other things work about this movie, it seems downright criminal to complain about that. So absolutely watch The Irishman on Netflix. All right, we're going down the list. Uncut Gems is up next, and this yeah. is kind of recent as well, isn't it? This is just hit theaters, yeah. This is a movie that, um, it's the most exciting, visceral movie-going experience I had all year, and it stars none, none other than Adam Sandler in the leading role. Every couple of years, he reminds us that he's a good dramatic actor, and here, he's just incredible. Um, he plays a gambling-addicted Manhattan jeweler who just can't get out of his own way. We spent a dizzying two hours watching him try to outrun uh, a, uh, you know, a good run of bad luck. I think that uh, this movie is just just such an exciting movie going experience. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. He's a guy who's despicable on paper, but Sandler is so good that he makes you actually kind of root for this guy, which I think is some sort of miracle. Um, and th this is just the most unforgettable thing I've seen in so long. I think maybe more than anything in the last couple of years, yeah. I've thought about this more afterwards. I just can't stop thinking about this movie. So hard R, definitely a drama, intense, but uh, you go see it. Not your typical Adam Sandler fan. Interesting, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, our last one on the list, Parasite. Parasite site. Yeah, this is a uh, big box office hit, but it's a South Korean movie um, about this poor family that cons their way into working for a rich and gullible family until things spiral wildly out of control. I'm being vague here because I don't want to give away the many surprises of this movie. This movie has some of the best twists I've seen on screen in years, uh, but it's also a black comedy. It's a satire about social inequality. It does so many things so well. As far as pure storytelling goes, it just doesn't get much better than this, and uh, the cast is amazing. If you're not used to watching foreign films, this is a great one to get your feet wet with because you'll forget that you're having to read subtitles five minutes in because it is so exciting. Um, this is just the closest thing to a masterpiece I've seen all year. So this is my favorite movie. 
So those are your top five. Well, now, I do think it's interesting. You mentioned some of them had just come out theaters. Yeah. Some were on Netflix. Where can we mm -hmm. go to kind of watch these? And then this year, would you tell people to pay more attention not just to the movies in theaters, but some that are coming out Absol on these streaming sites? Absolutely, because you've got, you know, Marriage Story is another great movie uh, that's on Netflix with Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. I think a lot of these streaming services are really getting getting into the game. Um, Amazon Prime has the Shia LaBeouf movie Honey Boy uh, mm -hmm. and the report. There's just so many different places to check out these movies. Of course, I'm a proponent of going to the theater. Um, I, I, but, you know, some of these movies like uh, The Irishman, you can't see anywhere but Netflix. So, um, but, you know, I always love going to the theater. So yeah. a lot of these are, are on demand, too. There's just a lot of different ways now that you can check these out. Excellent. And will you do reviews even when you're not here with us? Where can we That's go right. to see those? That's right. You can go to um, my Facebook page or uh, my Twitter page. It's Will Talk Movies. Excellent. We love having you here. Love the sweater. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We'll get another check of your forecast with Cassie. Today might be a good day to go to the movies for some people. <laughs>